Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Jen with How Jen Does It. This video is packed with lots of great food, workouts for the entire body, and just what I'm doing to stay healthy and fit at home. It's incredibly important to me to take really good care of myself by eating nutritious food and by moving my body. I have strived to have a very healthy relationship with food and with my body image. I think it's really important not to just measure your weight on the scale, but also know what your body fat percentage is, your bone and muscle mass, and your water weight. And I have had this body analyzer for over five years. I've shared it before and it's great. You can see my numbers here. They're in the healthy range. I'm 5'8 and I'm 44. I have a discount for you guys for 60% off. This is a great tool. Like I said, I've had it for over five years and it just really helps me to know what my body fat percentage is, if it's in a healthy range, what my water percentage is, what my muscle mass is, because you can't just go by the number on the scale as far as pounds. So you can check it out in the description box. It's one of my favorite tools. Let's start with what I eat. I'm going to give you lots of ideas. I always start the day with a cup of coffee right when I get up, and I just use unsweetened vanilla almond milk, so no creamer or sugar, and I also like to have a big glass of water when I wake up. After my coffee, I usually don't have any breakfast until I've been up for about three to four hours. And I have a smoothie pretty much every single day. This one is delicious. It's one cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk, one cup of baby spinach and baby kale. You can do one or the other or both. I have one cup of frozen mixed berries, one tablespoon of coconut chips, which are unsweetened, one frozen banana, and one tablespoon of almond butter and I just mix it together. I like my smoothie where it's nice and creamy and I eat it with a spoon and the frozen fruit will help it to get really creamy. I have a few different things that I have regularly for lunch. One of them is a salad. This one is delicious and I'll link the recipe below. We actually had this for dinner and I had some of the leftover ingredients so I made it for lunch. But I will mix up whatever we have in our fridge. So sometimes it's grilled barbecue chicken with avocado. Sometimes I'll do a Greek salad. Sometimes I'll even throw some roasted sweet potatoes in my salad. I just get creative. I love salads. I also like to have omelets for lunch regularly. I usually throw some vegetables in the omelet and then melt just a little bit of cheese. This one has some leftover salsa verde and half an avocado and I usually have fruit on the side with it. I also like to have this cucumber avocado salad with yogurt with a sprinkle of granola. It's a great filling the lunch. This salad is cucumber, some diced tomato, half an avocado that I cut into large chunks, and some Kalamata olives. Then I just drizzle it with some balsamic vinegar, add some dried oregano, salt, and pepper. These are the granolas that I like. They have pretty minimal ingredients and not a ton of sugar. I like to just sprinkle it on top of my yogurt and I do like the Ziggy's yogurt. It is low in sugar and it has a good amount of protein. Another lunch that I love to have in the summer is guacamole with cucumbers. It's so filling. It's surprisingly filling and delicious. And then I have fruit on the side. So my guacamole is really simple. I just have an avocado with chopped tomato, cilantro, some red onion, lime juice, and jalapeno, and just a touch of salt. I don't snack a ton, but there are a few things that I do like to keep on hand. I like pecans, so I like to have unsalted nuts. 
almonds are great too. I like to keep a lot of fresh fruit on hand. Uh, we have some nectarines, some apples. If I'm really hungry, I'll have the apple with some almond butter. I like to keep a lot of fresh produce and it's always great to have the fruit all cut up and ready to go so that it's quick and easy to grab. I like ba baby carrots for a snack too sometimes, um, blueberries, and just not having junk food in the house really, really helps. So we haven't been purchasing chips or cookies or any of that kind of stuff in quite a while. My boys are older so they can purchase it for themselves if they want it. Uh, it just makes it so much easier when it's not even available. I have five dinners that I wanted to share with you to give you an idea of what I have been eating. They're all really good and I'll link them below. I have made these beef kebabs several times this summer. They are a favorite. I use ground beef and ground turkey and just bump up the recipe to two pounds of ground meat. I serve it with some brown rice and a salad. The salad is just mixed baby greens, cucumber, tomato, red onion, fresh parsley, and the dressing is just olive oil and lemon juice. And then I make a really simple aioli. It has smoked paprika in it, so that's why it's the orange color. And it's just a little bit of mayo, some olive oil, lemon juice, garlic powder, smoked paprika, and a little bit of salt. It's such a good sauce um, for the beef kebabs. This salad is delicious and great for the summer. It has grilled chicken, grilled peaches, pecans, blueberries, and feta cheese, and then a delicious vinaigrette dressing. I'll link the recipe below. For this dinner, I have some grilled chicken sausage. It's tomato, basil, and mozzarella, really good. Some roasted zucchini. I just added some olive oil, salt, pepper, and grated Parmesan cheese to that. And then some new potatoes that I first boiled and then I got nice and crispy in a skillet. I'll link this tomato salad. It's so simple and so good. But the other things I just kind of made up, I do that a lot when I'm cooking. I just kind of throw things together, but it gives you an idea of what we had. This is the sausage that I purchased. I had never purchased it before, but it's really good. I found it at Kroger. I usually get things like that at Trader Joe's, but this one was really tasty. This is a chicken, broccoli, and pepper stir fry. I've shared my stir fry recipe before. I made this just a little bit different. I added some seasonings to the chicken and I didn't use all of the vegetables. I just used what I had on hand, which was broccoli and peppers. And then I sprinkled it with some sesame seeds. This is another really delicious salad that I've made a few times this summer. I'll link the recipe below. It's a grilled steak and corn salad. Delicious marinade for the steak. I used feta cheese instead, and then it has some tomato and red onion. It's very good. Now we're on to workouts. I have three main workouts that I do to hit each body part, and I'll explain it all as I go. So I'm going to first show you how I work out my legs and glutes. So I'm doing some squats here with resistance bands. I'll link the ones that I have below. And you really want to work your booty, so squeeze it when you come up, and that will really help. In between each set, I do abs just to shorten my workout so it doesn't take forever and to get my abs. So the resistance bands here aren't doing anything. I just have them on because I'm doing squats, and I just mix up the ab movements that I do. Now I'm back to doing some squats. You can do these with weights if you have them. You can do resistance bands. You can use a bar on your back with you know, as much weight as you can lift. So there are different ways to do them, but you might not have everything available at home. Here I'm doing another set of abs in between. So that's just what I do, and I mix up what ab exercises I do each day. I'm not going to show you every single set because this video would literally be three or more hours long. 
here are some squats with a dumbbell. So if you have some dumbbells, you can do this. Now, of course, I'm at home at my gym. I usually do this with a 35 pound dumbbell and right here I'm using 20 pounds. So it really is a great way to firm up your legs and your booty. Again, doing some abs in between each set. So what I usually do is three sets of each exercise. At the gym is a little bit different because we have more weights there, obviously. So I start out with a set that is fairly easy for me, but not too easy. And I usually do 10 to 12 reps. The next set will be a medium weight and that will be you know, a little bit harder, but I can still do it about 10 times. And then the last set will be heavy for me. And I do that until I can't do it anymore. So usually three sets, sometimes I have to do a fourth set just because I didn't get a high enough weight and I can do it fairly easily. So here I'm doing some leg extensions. These are great if you have the gym available or if you have one of these at home. Again, doing some abs in between. So you can see here I'm adding weight to each set. This leg extension machine isn't the best. The one at the gym is better. I'm in Michigan, so the gyms are closed here. And thankfully we have workout equipment. These are another favorite ab exercise. They look similar to push-ups. They do work out your upper body a little bit, but they're actually for your abs. I learned this from a YouTube video. You just want to tighten your abs kind of like when you do a plank. Another favorite exercise for your legs is lunges. I prefer walking lunges. So you can do them by themselves. You can do them with resistance bands like I'm showing here, or you can do them with some dumbbells. You just want to make sure when you're doing lunges or walking lunges that you don't let your knee go over the top of your foot. You can see here, I'm trying to show you a better view. With anything, if you have any pain, any questions, you have any restrictions, ask your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a fitness expert. This is just what works for me. These are awesome, one of my favorite. They're a variation of a glute bridge. You just squeeze your booty and they really work. When you get done with these, Like you'll be sore even later that day, but the next day, they're killer. Deadlifts are also great for so many body parts, your back, your legs, your booty. You can see how I'm doing them here. I did not show every single set and I didn't even show every ab session in between because it would just be incredibly long. I just wanted to give you some ideas of what I do. I love squats and for whatever reason, I can use a lot more weight at the gym, but I always start out with 25 on each side and then just work my way up. You can work out your calves pretty well without any equipment. You just need a step. So you just want to have your heel over the step and then push it down below the step and then come back up just using your calf. You don't want to use your quadriceps. You don't want to use anything but your calf muscle. So you can see how I'm doing it here. You can also do these with just one leg. So you can raise the one leg and just lift up with the other. Now we're on to my second workout, and this is going to be my back and shoulders. I'm starting out with abs. If you have a captain's chair or one at your gym, these are great. 
I like to just balance myself and not hold on and just really concentrate on using my abs to lift up my legs. It's a really great exercise. And I should mention that a lot of times people do these with their legs out straight, which is also great as long as you're just using your abs. I actually have a hip flexor injury and trying to do them with my legs straight really bothers it. So I just make sure I bend my knees and just use my abs. So again, I do three sets building up the weight. I'm not going to show you every set and then I do my abs in between. And again, I'm not going to show you every single thing. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So these are lat pull downs, which are great for toning up the sides of your back. So I just like to use a straight bar and I like an underhand grip and then just, you know, really pull it down and use those lat muscles and then like I mentioned just add some weight to it and keep going until I can't do anymore. Next, I am doing seated rows. The gym setup is different. Um, we had to improvise a little bit, but it still works really well. This is great for the middle of your back. So you just want to make sure you're only using your back muscles when you pull it back. So you don't wanna like throw yourself forward and then jerk yourself back. You just really want to use those back muscles. Here I am doing the pec deck, as we like to call it. So this is for your pec muscles. This one isn't anywhere close to as good as the one we have at the gym, but it still works. It's, it's really great for forming that area up. Now I am doing the bench press, which of course is for your chest. I am not really strong in this area. I can't bench press a lot and I'm perfectly fine with that. At my gym, most of the women don't bench press at all. So don't be afraid to do it, even if you can't use a lot of weight. I will say that if you are just starting to work out or not quite used to bench pressing, always have a spotter with you. This bar is great because it does have the hooks. It's a Smith machine, so you can just hook it on yourself. This is the rear delt fly. It's going to work your rear delts, which is the back of your shoulder. You definitely want to do this exercise. Uh, at my gym, the pec deck does have the fly where you can turn it around and, and do the same thing on a machine, but the one we have at home does not do that. So this is a great exercise. You can just use some dumbbells. You just wanna bend over so that it's really getting that area. Bench over rows are another great exercise that you can do with just dumbbells if you have a bench. These are going to work your back primarily, but they also hit your shoulders as well. And I would say with this, just make sure you're really pulling and using your back. Some exercises are really easy to cheat and we definitely want to make sure that we're doing everything correctly. Make sure you know the muscle that you're using. Um, make sure that you use proper technique so that you get the results, but also so that you don't injure yourself. And like I said before, if you have any questions, 
be sure to ask your doctor, a fitness expert, don't be afraid to get a personal trainer for even a short period of time if you're new to using the gym. They're going to show you how to use everything properly and show you the proper technique. It does not have to be intimidating at all if you don't want to use a personal trainer. A lot of times at the gym they will show you around and show you how each of the machines works and then just make sure you know you can always look things up on google just to make sure you know what muscle you are using so that you're doing everything properly i know that some of you watching a lot of you watching work out regularly and you're just trying to get some different ideas but there are some of you watching who are new to working out new to maybe lifting weights so i just wanted to make sure that i encourage you to learn the proper techniques and make sure you're doing everything correctly so that you don't injure yourself and we want good results and once you know you know and you'll be amazing at it so here I am doing my shoulders arm exercise. So I do my shoulders, my biceps, my triceps. And I was walking around the basement because I do normally like to walk outside, but when it rains, I have to get those steps in in my basement. So here I am doing some shoulder raises. You can use whatever weight feels comfortable and then move up from there. These are really great. You can do one arm at a time or you can do both arms, whatever feels right. You can even sit down and do these. And then these are lateral shoulder raises. And these are front shoulder raises. I always do all three. They hit different areas of the shoulders. So if you are looking to tone up your shoulders, a lot of you ask me this. Um, these are great exercises. And if you just have some dumbbells, we have more dumbbells at the gym, obviously. So at home, I usually only go up to 15 pounds in each hand but at the gym i do a little higher but i haven't been to the gym in five months so these are really really simple effective exercises that you can do for your shoulders and these are bicep curls so common probably the most common exercise the only thing I can really add is just make sure you don't swing your arm too much and that way you'll see some results. This is probably a good point to say, don't be afraid to lift weight. Of course you want to make sure you don't lift too heavy so that you don't injure yourself, but don't be afraid to lift weight. A lot of it is genetics. I lift weights all the time. You can see I don't have large arms. I don't have big biceps. I have very long arms and I could lift weight for the rest of my life and I'm just not gonna have big biceps, which I actually personally prefer. I just want to have more toned, lean muscles. That's just what I like, but I just do not have the genetics to have really big arms, so. At the gym, I can lift more weights because we have more weights there and I'm never gonna get really big and bulky. Sorry, these parts are a little out of focus. I was trying to have it zoomed in a little bit, but then it didn't focus. <laughs> So I'm doing the bicep curls and then I'm doing hammer curls, which work a different part of the bicep. And then at the gym, we have a few other machines that work the bicep, but at home, this works really well. And tricep push downs. These are one of my favorites. 
you just want to make sure that you don't let the bar come up too far so you want to keep the tension on your tricep muscle so you can see i'm not allowing my arm to go all the way back up These are a great exercise that you can do if you have some dumbbells or even something that you can use in place of dumbbells to give it a little bit of weight. And you can see how I'm doing it here. Just bend over and just use your triceps to push back. I have made a goal to get 10,000 steps in each day. We have some really great trails near our house, so I usually walk those or I walk around my neighborhood and I'm so thankful that where we live we have lots of really pretty ponds and trails, so it makes walking outside really nice. And if it's raining like it was the in the last workout, I just walk around my basement, but I'm really diligent about getting my 10,000 steps in. Once I hit 10,000 steps, I usually don't worry too much about having my phone with me, so it is actually over that, but 10,000 steps is a good goal. So those are my three main workouts, and then I will go back to doing the legs and glutes. I usually lift weights five days a week, but I try to get my steps in every day. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to check out the Body Analyzer. I have 60% off if you use my link and code, which is in the description box below. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and follow me over on Instagram. I post there very regularly and I will see you soon. Thanks again for watching, guys.